Today we're going to be talking about the brand new DJI Air 3 and to do this we're going to give you the beginner's guide. Everything that you need to know to get started with this drone from your very first flight all the way to all the different photo settings, the video settings and then also the automated settings that you'll be able to find in this cool drone. We'll talk about the new controller, we'll also talk about the brand new batteries, the brand new design on this drone and then the two different types of camera that you'll be able to use. We'll talk about all the different safety features and uh, you should be ready for your first flight. Let's get to it. All right, before we get started talking about the drone, we're going to talk about this brand new controller here. This is called the DJI RC2, which is the big brother to the RC1, if you want to call it that, that we had before on all the other DJI drones. And the big difference here is going to be these antennas here that we can orient whichever way we want. You want to be placing those in the direction of where the drone is facing so that uh, you can get the best possible signal. Everything else is pretty much the same. Now, if you're brand new to the DJI brand or brand new to this type of drone, this has a screen integrated into it, which is amazing. This will allow you to go from nothing to unfolded and flying within only a few minutes. You also have the option of buying this drone with the RCN2, which is the brand new controller. That's the replacement for the RCN1. Now, in that case, you would have to clip on the top right here. I don't have one to show you, but to clip your phone into it and then use a cable that you would bring directly to the camera. And then you would need to run an app on here, which is called a DJI Fly app. In this case, the DJI Fly app is already installed on here. At the bottom here, you'll see that there's a little card slot. Now, don't be uh, confused between this and the slot that is in the aircraft in itself. This is only to record footage into the controller here, maybe recording the screen. It's not for recording the actual footage inside the drone as you fly. For this, you're going to want to do it from the drone, and I'll show you that in a minute. You're also going to have to screw in these little uh, handles right here, these little sticks. They are from the back of the controller right in here. At first, it might be kind of weird. You might grab this and be like, how do I fly this? You have to take these out and then you have to screw them in on both sides. And then we're going to have a power button right here on and off. Here is going to be your mode to switch between a S for sports mode and for normal and C for cinematic. I'll show you how these works in a minute. And then here we have a pause slash return to home button. That return to home is going to allow us to, well, return to home in case something happens. You're going to push and hold on this button and the drone is going to come back from where it took off from. And then at the top here, we have buttons to take a photo and to take a video. And then here we have the ability to control on the left side. So on this side here to control the gimbal. This is going to control the zoom for certain types of drone. This one has a zoom, so you'll be able to switch between that. You also will be able to do it in the app. And then lastly, right here, we have two customizable buttons, C1 and C2. You'll be able to change that in the setting. So this is it right here. In your bag, also, you will have batteries. Now, depending if you have the Fly More combo like we did here, you'll get this beautiful box with the battery inside. Don't try to yank on them like I did the first time I did this push right here and then you'll be able to get a battery out. These batteries are going to go into your drone. First, you need to make sure the battery is okay. You're going to push the button right here. One, two, three, four. It's probably what you want. You want at least three in here. Take off with a full battery. It's better. If it's not, then make sure you put it on the charger like this and then plug in your USB uh, plug. I left ours in the studio, but you, you have one in your bag to plug right here and get everything started. Now, to put the battery in, we're going to do this. We're going to put the battery right here, expand those legs. You notice the way I did this, I'm going to do this in back order. The back legs go out last, front legs first, extend, and then the back legs just like this. And then you will be able to put the battery in. Uh, you notice there's a connector right here and there's a connector right here at the bottom of the drone in the back. You're going to slide that in. You can't do it wrong clip you hear that clip and that battery is in here secured now i'm going to take it out again we'll put it in later because i'm going to put the propellers and i don't like to do that with the battery in now these batteries here are going to allow you to fly for quite a long time uh 40 ish minutes as published i said ish because it depends on the conditions outside the temperature the altitude at which you're flying uh, in our case we were able to get 37 plus minutes at seven or 8,000 feet equivalent altitude. So that's actually really, really good performance. The best we've seen so far of any drones we've ever tested. So I like these batteries because they're uh, intelligent batteries, which means that they will auto discharge in case uh, you leave them on for too long. Uh, they will stop charging when they are fully charged, which is not always the case with some 
other drone batteries. But all in all, these are really great uh, batteries. They're not cheap, so be, be careful. Make sure you take care of them. Make sure that you don't uh, charge them in a very hot environment. They need to be breathing. Now, I know you're gonna say, well, they're in the box. Yes, they are in the box, but make sure that this is not inside of a, of a hot car or inside of a closet. They need to be breathing so that the air can escape and the heat can escape. And then make sure that uh, you don't leave them charged on the charger all the time. Only charge them when you're ready to go fly. I know it's always good to have batteries ready, but don't leave them plugged in all the time. Now from here, let's go ahead and talk about the aircraft in itself. We unfolded the aircraft. Let's take a look at the anatomy of the aircraft in itself. We have the gimbal protector right here. It's a bit of a pain in the butt to take it off. So you're gonna push right here until the bottom unclips, and then we're gonna be able to pull this out. Now what we have here in the front is a three axis gimbal. And what it means is that this is stabilized around three different axes. And uh, once we power it on, then this is going to start to stabilize now. Right now, it's a little bit loose. Now, be careful with this. We don't want to attach any kind of weight. We don't want it to be uh, flying in humidity like clouds and fog. And we also don't want it to be uh, in, in a dusty environment like the beach, for example. Be very careful because this is a pretty fragile piece of gear. And you notice this is inside of this, we have our two different sensors that are going to capture the light, the 1X and the 3X. The 1X is at the bottom, the 3X is at the top. Now from here, we have obstacle avoidance sensors, one on each side right here in the front. And you notice that they're angled at about a 45 degree angle. And what it does is it allows the sensors to capture objects and obstacles more than just in front of the drone, also to the side. And the ones in the back are also oriented in the same direction, which is eventually you get 360 degrees of coverage by using these four sensors. We also have some at the bottom right here. We also have something to allow us to measure kind of the, the altitude. We have an altitude radar, if you want to call it that, that is going to allow you to maintain altitude when you're above the ground, uh, when we are not using GPS. And then at the tip of these arms right here, we have our motors that we are going to attach propellers to. And then here inside of this arm, we have our antennas. And these antennas, you don't want to break them. You want to make sure that when you land, you don't land too hard or with too much forward movement because these will snap. Uh, we've done this on another drone when we were doing some testing. Not this one, these seems to be pretty sturdy, but these two right here, that's where your antennas are located. And then we're going to take our propeller. So your drone comes with a set of propellers, a bunch of propellers. And in this case, what you wanna look for is on the inside of that circle right here, there are two different types of colors because we have two different types of propellers. We have one that doesn't have a marking and we have one that has a silver marking. And this is very easy to do. You're going to match these to the motors right here that have a silver marking or no marking. As you can guess, silver goes to silver. We're gonna put this down like this. I'm gonna hold the motor like this with my hand and I'm gonna put it in and then turn. This one, the silver, we're gonna turn clockwise while we're holding the motor. And we're gonna do the same thing from the diagonal motor right here. And we're also gonna hold the motor, put it in, turn clockwise on the propeller. As you can imagine, on the other side, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna hold the motor, we're gonna put them in, and then we're gonna go counterclockwise. Now guess what, you can't mess it up. You cannot put this propeller on here, it just won't let you. So you are pretty safe. And then we're gonna do this again on this side. Now what we have is we need to make sure that these propellers are not coming off as we're holding the motors, because the last thing that we want is for this to happen where we can pull the propeller like this. It means it's not put in place. You have to push and then turn, and then it secures it in place. And then here's our propeller. Now from here, we can look at the rest of the drone. Like we said before, we have the battery compartment, but at the bottom of it right here in the back, we have our little card slot and a USB-C port. That card slot is where we're gonna put our SD card. It's a micro SD card, the tiny little one. You can see it right here. You have to put it face down, okay, face down and into the back of the drone like this. And then using your nail, you're just gonna push in and then you'll hear that click and then it's secured in here. And then you can close that little piece of plastic in the back and then you are ready to go. Now you might say, what is the sticker that you have here on the side? This is a registration sticker with the FAA. This drone is flown in the United States. It's over 250 grams or 0.55 pounds, which means that it needs to be registered with the FAA. You can do this only in one place, which is the FAA Drone Zone. We'll put a link down in the description for you to go and do that. 
And then uh, we actually offer free stickers. So if you want to put a cool looking sticker on your drone, we have four different colors. We send them over for free. Uh, go to pilotinstitute.com free and then we will send you a set free of charge. That's right, it's free. Okay, from here, we're gonna move on to the next thing in your collection, which is these uh, box of filters. Potentially, you may or may not have this box of filter, but these are called ND filter. I'm gonna tell you when we do our first flights, what is going to, uh, what we're gonna be using them for and how to select the right one. Right now we have an ND32 on here, but you can take off without it and uh, just go and have fun with that. So I think we should head over and do our first flight. All right, the first thing that we need to do before we even talk about taking out the drone and, and powering it on is we need to find out a good spot to fly. And we're here at Watson Lake in Prescott, Arizona, which is one of our favorite spots to fly. And we have a big open field with almost no trees and a ton of airspace above us where we can fly. Perfect spot. Now, right behind me, there is a tree. So I'm gonna take off here. I'm a bit more experienced than you are if you're watching this video and flying for the first time. So I'm okay here, but you probably wanna be away from any kind of trees. I would say 50 to 100 feet at the very least. And make sure that you keep an eye on everything around you. I have a mountain on this side. I have another tree right here. I have a tree behind me. I have a tree right here. And then there's a whole bunch of other trees right here. And I'm going to estimate the altitude of all of these so that I can fly higher. I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna to climb to that altitude that I know is safe. And then from here, I don't have to worry. The biggest thing is this hill right here full of red rocks. That's about probably 100 feet. So I'm gonna fly at probably 200 just to be safe on my first flight. Now you notice I'm holding this in my hand right here, which is a landing pad. This landing pad is actually really high quality here. Uh, we'll put a link to this one if, you, uh, if you're interested in getting it. I like it because it's, it's kind of weighted and I can just lay this down. It's not gonna catch the wind very easily. And, um, and then I'm gonna be able to take off from this. Now you might say, why do you wanna use this? If you live in an area that has tall grass, that has a very uh, rocky or sandy or dusty area, this is gonna be good for your drone. It's gonna keep the dust and the dirt and the, the grass so you don't uh, turn into a lawnmower as soon as you power on the motors. So I'm gonna set it up right here on the ground and then we'll put the drone on here in a minute. Now, before, we're not done yet, okay? We still have to do a little bit more pre-flight before we get up. And I'm gonna pull out my phone right here. And we're gonna go to an app that is called Air Control. And Air Control is this awesome, awesome app created by Aloft. And in this app, what it's gonna tell us is if there is controlled airspace or airspace that needs authorization to fly in. And as soon as you turn it on, it should spot on tell you exactly where you are and if there is airspace around us. Well, guess what? We are in Prescott, close to the airport, the airport, the airport is this way. And we are in an area that's called a 400 grid. What does the 400 mean? It means that we can fly up to 400 feet with this specific drone. So what I can do here is I can request airspace approval. It's called LANCE, L-A-A-N-C. I'm gonna push on the LANCE button on the bottom right corner. It's asking me what type of activity I'm gonna do. For you, it's gonna be recreational. It says section 44809. I'm gonna click part 107 commercial. Part 107 is if you wanna fly for non-recreational purposes. If you're interested in doing this, this is the course that we teach, pretty much the number one in the country teaching this. Click on the link down in the description if you wanna to get to part 107. I'm gonna click commercial. It doesn't make that big of a difference at this stage. And then you notice I have the ability to stretch my little markers here by clicking on the corner and holding on them. And I can draw the area where I'm gonna be flying in. And this is probably big enough of an area right here. And from here, I can slide the slider at the bottom. It says eligible for auto approval up to 400 feet. Yes, I'm gonna go as high as 400 feet. If you want more information about the rules, we also have free courses for this. Then we're gonna click next, next. We're gonna do this a couple times, all the way until we have agree and submit. Now I did this already. As soon as you click agree and submit, it's gonna send your information. You're gonna get a text message and then you'll be ready to fly. Now, we have this portion done. The next thing and the last thing is we check the weather. This is Arizona in the middle of summer. Right now it's nice and dry and pretty hot, but uh, this is the perfect day. The clouds are not very low. Uh, the visibility is pretty much unlimited. So we are good to start our flight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our drone right here and we're gonna grab our battery and we're gonna put the battery in the drone. I showed you how to do this already. Push and we have that clip, right? The battery is not moving and we're gonna tap and hold, double tap and hold. So tap, tap and hold, and you're gonna hear a beep. One, two, tap, tap and hold. There you go. You notice these motors are doing this. There's a little beep, beep right here. We're gonna put it down on our 
landing pad and then we're going to grab the controller and we're going to do the same thing with the controller so we're going to extend the antennas you notice i have them out just like this i have my little stick we should have done that already uh, before we started and i'm going to do the same on the power button double tap and hold tap tap and hold there you go you hear the beep beep it's going to blink for a little bit the screen turns on and from here we're going to be able to go and fly our drone now depending if you've turned on your drone and i'm assuming you have before you came here you might have to activate your drone i can't walk you through this because well we've already activated ours but it's pretty self-explanatory you're gonna have to create a dji account and then link the drone to your dji account and then you'll be ready to start so from here i'm going to assume that you get to at least this screen or even possibly automatically into the view of the drone already if you get to this screen right here you're going to type on go fly and once you tap on go fly there you go you have the view of the actual drone there's a few things in here we need to do before we take off because i want to make sure that uh, you are safe to fly you notice on the top left corner it says n mode that's the normal mode that's the switch right here on top of your controller make sure it's in m mode or in c mode which is cinematic don't start in s mode which is the sports mode now it also says takeoff permitted you can actually tap on that and it will give you some information about what's going on around you there it says aircraft not in flight vision systems blah 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 everything is good it says remote id is functioning correctly and then here there is also some good information that we need to verify before we take off the first one is rth altitude return to home altitude this means that if something happens to this drone let's say we lost the connection between here and the drone the drone is not going to just fall from the sky it's going to come back and return to home and what it does it's going to pick an altitude which we have selected right here we have 328 feet this is pretty good remember i was approved to fly up to 400 feet i've looked around and i've decided that the highest peak is behind me which is these mountains which is about 100 feet so 328 is pretty good it's going to give us enough clearance and then it's going to come back and then it's going to land right where we took off from also there's in here maximum altitude for the flight i would recommend that you keep this at 400 right now when you get started i have this a little bit higher because i was doing a shoot recently that had me going on the side of a mountain and i had to go higher than 400 feet from the takeoff point it had me going not more than 400 feet above the ground because that's the rules but actually more than 400 feet from takeoff point so i had it set to a higher altitude and then you have the maximum distance i would also recommend that you keep this maybe at first within like 2000 feet maximum chances are 2000 feet you won't be able to see the actual drone uh, visual line of sight you have to maintain visual line of sight in the united states so keep that within a, a, a small range that's going to help you to make sure that you don't go too far when you first get started and then from here we also have the ability to format our location our, our storage if we wanted to i'm not going to worry about that right now so i'm going to tap out of it and then we are back in here a few more things that i want you to verify i want you to tap on the top three buttons on the top right corner right here and we have safety safety it says obstacle avoidance action chances are yours is going to be set to break i had mine turn off or to bypass i recommend either of these what it means is that if you get too close to an object if you have it set on break it's going to break it's going to stop right there it's going to prevent you from going into a wall unless you're in sports mode in which case these obstacle avoidance do not work okay so make sure you keep it on normal or cine and make sure you have it either on break or bypass bypass means that it's going to go around the object create and find a path which is actually really impressive the way that it does it uh, and you notice there is two options bypassing option normal or nifty when you click on nifty it says when controlling the aircraft via the control stick and nifty bypassing is enabled aircraft avoid obstacle with more subtle altitude changes and fly more smoothly this is if you're doing videos and you want to make sure that you don't mess your shot because the drone all of a sudden went very clearly evasive action out of the way you're going to keep it on nifty so i'm going to keep it on nifty as a matter of fact i'm going to keep mine on break i like break and then underneath it it says display radar map from here you can turn that on if there is an object in front of the drone when we take off or whatever it is it's going to start to beep and i'm going to turn that off because i don't like it it's kind of annoying that beep 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 beep, beep all the time and then I want also to make sure that you have advanced RTH set to optimal. Don't ask me why at the moment, but this is what we want to have. And in our auto RTH altitude, remember we set that up already. Maximum altitude, maximum distance, we've set that up. And there's one more thing that I want you to go and check. All the way at the bottom, there's an advanced safety settings, and then we'll be ready to take off. 
When we click on advanced safety settings, it says signal lost RTH. It means that if we lose the signal between this and the drone, the aircraft is going to return to us. This is what we want. Descend is another option and hover is another option. I would say hover is good if you're flying indoors and if you lose the signal, you don't want the drone flying through the roof, you're gonna set it to hover. Descent, I still don't have really a good reason why you would want to use that, but maybe it's possible. And then the last setting in here, it says emergency propeller stop, emergency only, okay? Don't click on that and use any time. Do not put any time in here. Keep it on emergency only. Uh, we have a video on that. We'll put it right here so that you can watch it and see what happens when you don't have that set to emergency only. And then we have air sense, which is when there's another aircraft flying in the area. That's going to tell us in here if it has the proper equipment, then it's going to tell us that something is flying low and that we should land. These are all great settings that you need to have before you take off. Okay, and that's really it at this stage. I think we're finally ready to take off. I know it's a lot. Eventually, you'll get used to all of these different settings in here. On the top right corner, there is a little satellite signal and it says 22 or 23. It keeps fluctuating between the two. This is the number of satellites that the drone has captured, which means that we have a really good GPS location set in the drone. So this is good. The higher the number, the better. So from here, we're going to do our first flight and uh, go navigate around and I'll show you a couple things. All right, we're ready for our first flight. I moved back a little bit away from the drone. The one thing we want to do now is kind of scan the area, scan for aircraft. There's no aircraft flying around here. Look behind you as well, okay? See if there's any aircraft coming around or hear them. And then we're going to look for people. Now, obviously we have our team right here and myself. There's kids behind me, they're up on the rocks, so that's fine, that's not really a factor. And then there's people sitting over here, there's a person over there. I'm kind of aware of what is going on in here. They're not really a factor, they're not going to affect my flight, but I need to keep an eye on them in case they start moving. I don't want them flying under my drone or flying towards my drone. Little kids sometimes will see a drone flying up in the air and they start running towards it. That's the one thing you want to be very careful with. And either you land or you take the drone away, take off real quickly and then start flying away from them. So make sure there's not really, if you're not super comfortable, Comfortable. there's not really anyone around to bother you. Now we have a satellite, this is important, we need to make sure we have the right number of satellites in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the controller here. I'm going to take this right stick and bring it on the bottom right on the inside like this, and then this stick bottom left on the inside at the same time. That combo is going to start the motors spinning. It's not going to take off just yet, it's just going to make the motors spin. As an alternative, on here you have a button Right now, it's right next to my histogram, which is this little spiky uh, graph right here. I can tap on that and it says take off. All I have to do is tap and hold on that takeoff button and the drone will take off by itself. I'm going to show you the manual way. This is kind of the automatic way and easy way. If you're not super comfortable, this is a great way to do it. So I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to spool. So I'm going to tell people around that this is about to get live right here. Spooling. The propellers are spinning. And then I'm going to say taking off and then the drone is going to go up in the air. I'm going to use the left stick right here and I'm going to give it gas. I'm going to bring it up and that's it. I'm not touching this one right here. I'm just going to pinch it and bring it up. And you notice the drone is going to take off. I'm going to keep going up and up and up and up and up. And I'm going to go until an altitude where I'm comfortable that I'm not going to hit anything. I said about 200 feet. I'm going to do that. I'm going to climb up. All right, to about 200 feet. How do I know I'm at 200 feet? Look in the bottom left corner. There's an H and it says right now 118 feet. That's my height. That's my height above takeoff point right here. I'm going to go to 200. You notice we can start to see the lake back here. It looks beautiful. And you notice we don't hear the drone nearly as much either. I'm at about 200 right here. I'm pretty good. All I used was the left stick right here. From here, we are going to be flying forward and I'm going to use the right stick. I'm going to use the right stick and I'm going to push it forward. As I push it forward, the drone is going to move forward, as you can see from the video. It's very slow right now. I'm going to move the gimbal down, use this controller right here on the left side. I'm going to uh, move the wheel to the left. And as I move it to the left, you notice the gimbal comes down. There you go. And then I'm going to fast forward again. Right stick forward, the drone moves forward. It's really that simple, all right? Keep an eye on your drone, okay, at all time. You should be looking outside, look at the drone, look at people around you. And then here, if I wanted to go to the left, sideways to the left, I'm gonna use that right stick. I'm gonna go sideways to the left. And there you go. It's only moving sideways to the left. Same thing on the right side. I'm gonna go right side, move it to the right. Here it is. Okay, now we have one more control that we haven't talked about yet. It's this one going to the left stick, going to the left. 
And what this is gonna do is it's going to yaw. It's called yaw, Y-A-W. And you notice that the aircraft is gonna rotate around itself, around the vertical axis of the aircraft. It's kind of just spinning. Now, this is not something that you can do with a, a fixed wing aircraft. You can do this with a, a quadcopter, which is what we're flying right now. And you notice it's doing a nice little pan of the area. Now, I didn't go full, full left stick. You notice what happens when you go full left stick? It goes pretty quickly. You have to be pretty gentle with this. And you can change the sensitivity that's a bit more advanced. But in this case, we're going to be using that. Now, from here, we can do a lot of things. We can do a lot of different... Um, uh, maneuvers we can combine all of these together we can go back and let's see tw towards this uh, red roof uh, area over there i'm going to go forward we're using the right stick forward and then at the same time i'm going to use the yaw on the left stick and move it to the left and notice what happens i'm going to kind of go in a circle you notice if i'm doing kind of like a potato in this case now i want to keep an eye on the drone okay i want to make sure that i still have it in sight i can still see it from here make sure i'm not flying over people you see the beautiful lake right here and the drone is going in a circle. Now, if I wanted to do the same thing to the right, I can go forward and then go to the right. And I'm looking at the screen to see what I'm doing. I want to make sure I keep the drone in line of sight as well. OK, now from here, I'm going to bring it back because it's getting pretty close to being maximum line Fly of sight. With caution. And you notice what it says, main aircraft detected. Fly with caution. Now we're close to the airport. I know aircraft do not fly this slow in this area, but I'm still gonna descend a little bit. I'm at 120 feet above the ground. We're inside of a basin we're here with hills all around. So it's not really an issue. That warning actually went away. I can still see my drone right here. I'm gonna bring it back closer to us by going backwards. Now you're gonna say, okay, what if you lost? What if I started to spin a little too much and I have no idea where everything is, okay? Well, let's look on the bottom left corner. You notice I have a little circle with a little a yellow H next to it. Well, that H is your home point. That's me, that's me sitting right here. That blue thing in the middle, that's your drone. And if you can't see that view, tap on that map right here, tap on the bottom right corner. You may see the view that I'm, look that I'm sharing with you right now, which is kind of a, a little embedded map. Tap on that bottom right corner of that map and it's gonna turn into that little circle. Now, all I have to do to get the, bring the drone back, if you lost line of sight, let's say we can't see it, and we're going to yaw until the blue triangle that represents the drone is pointing towards our area. Do you see how it's lined up straight in front of it right now? And I'm going to move forward. And eventually what it does, it's going to bring us closer to our home point. And I can see my drone. I can hear it now and I can see ourselves on the screen. But this is how you would get back home. Obviously, you can also push on that return to home button right here and it's going to bring the drone home back for you but in this case this is an easy way to orient yourself and orient the drone so right now it's facing towards us you notice what i did to bring the drone back towards us i went forward now this is confusing when we press forward before it went away from us now we're pushing forward and it's coming back towards us yes that's because this is always controlling the drone based on where the drone is pointing the, point, the drone is pointing towards us, so when I push forward, it comes closer to us. If I turn the drone 180 degrees to the right, now it's facing away from us. If I push forward, it's going to go away from us. You notice the distance, the D on the bottom left, it says 270. It increases if I push forward. Again, if I turn 180 degrees back towards us, you notice that we're facing the little H yellow H on the bottom left corner, and now I push forward, that D, that distance, should be getting smaller. That's because the drone is getting closer to us, okay? So those are the basic maneuvers, forward, back, left, right, yawing. You can control the drone using a variety of all of these, get more comfortable with it. If you really want to get crazy with this, we have a maneuvers course that has 50 maneuvers. It actually comes free with our Part 107 course. You'll be able to practice all your maneuvers and get Really, some of these maneuvers are really complex. You have to move the wheel. You have to move the controller in all different directions. Uh, it's going to make you a better pilot. But play around. Play with this. This is your first flight. We're going to come back and land. And then I want to talk about some of the other features that are found in this drone as we fly. 
Now, as a tip, during your first flight, make sure you keep an eye on the battery. You notice that we have a 34%. We've been flying around for quite a while. It also says next to it 12 minutes and 11 seconds left or 14 seconds left. If we tap on that, it's going to tell us six minutes and 16 seconds until return to home, nine minutes until forced landing, and 12 minutes until the battery is depleted. This is for your information, this is gonna change depending on how crazy you fly around. If you fly in sports mode, it's gonna drain a lot quicker. Make sure you have enough time to come back. Make sure that you check for the winds as well. Maybe the drone get pushed out of the way because you had a tailwind, and then now you have to come back against the wind. You're gonna burn a lot more energy doing that. At one point, the drone is not gonna be able to sustain flying in the air, and it's gonna to start to come down. It's not gonna crash, it's gonna to start to come down and force land. You want to do that and come back before it force lands in the middle of water or in the middle of somebody's uh, house or land or, or on top of someone or whatever it is. You want to be very careful with this, okay? So pay attention to those numbers at the top. So now let's do our first landing, all right? You have two options for the first landing. You can push the home button right here. You're freaked out. You don't know what the heck is going on. Push that home button, push and hold. I'm going to try it. push and hold. Do you hear that return beep? To home. It says return to home. And what the drone is gonna do now, it's gonna find where we are. It's actually close enough to us that it's not climbing all the way to that altitude, but it's gonna go right on top of us. And then it's gonna land right here where we are located. Now I'm gonna stop that. Landing. I'm gonna push. Yeah, she, she wanted to land it right here. I'm gonna stop that and I'm gonna do it by hand. But now what I'm gonna do is, the drone is right on top of us. I'm gonna bring it down using the left stick and bringing the stick down and I'm gonna keep an eye. Now you notice the drone is facing to my right. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna yaw the aircraft so that it's facing away from me. Why? Because that's when my controls are gonna respond the best. They're not gonna be reverse controls. If I move the left stick to the left, it moves to the left. If I move the right stick to the right, it moves to the right. That's the easiest way to fly. You don't want it to be inverted. It's gonna get very confusing very quick. So I'm gonna bring the drone down a little bit more. Slowly, I'm gonna look around, make sure that nobody is walking when I'm landing. Keep an eye on everybody else. You can hear the drone a lot more right now. And as I get closer to the ground, I'm gonna to try to put it right on top of my landing pad, a little bit to the right, a little bit back at the same time. I'm going slow so you can see exactly what is going on. And then here, I'm gonna go all the way down on my left stick, like I wanna slam it to the ground. And what the drone is gonna do is, it's gonna go into auto landing mode. And there you go, it landed. You heard the beeping, the beeping was the radar telling us we were getting close to the ground and the propellers stopped all by themselves. You didn't have to hold these motors, the, the sticks on the inside like we did for taking off. You just had to basically bring this left stick here down the opposite of what we did when we took off, which was to bring the stick up, okay? Now, I wanna mention something. Here, I'm flying by myself. Usually, when I fly, I fly with our team, but if I'm flying by myself, sometimes it's good to have a visual observer with you. On your first flight, bring a friend. That friend is gonna be able to look around, scan for other people. Maybe somebody saw that you're flying a drone and they're really excited or they're really hangry. And you want somebody that's gonna be able to stop and maybe talk with that person as you're concentrating on flying the drone. If you can't find anybody else, that's fine. You can, you're not required to have a, it's called a VO, visual observer, but it's actually a really good idea, especially on your first flight. All right, let's take a look at some of these settings in here, and then uh, we're gonna move on to the next category. All right, well, let's go ahead and talk about some of the camera settings. And I figured we could sit down to do this. Now you probably don't wanna be messing with the camera settings in flight too much. That's gonna burn through your battery, uh, especially when you're getting started. But if you tap on, the, the see this big white button on the right side of the screen, that's your shutter. That's what's gonna allow us to take a photo. If we tap on the little square that's on top of it, that's gonna bring up the menu of all the different things we can do with the camera. It starts with photo on the right side, and then on the left side, we have all the different options. We, we can scroll up and down, single, AEB, which is the bracketing mode. Maybe a little bit more advanced for this video. We have the burst mode and then a time shot. Time shot is gonna be every so many seconds we take a picture. Burst mode is gonna be so many sec so many pictures taken in a second. And then we have AEB, which is a bracketing where we're gonna take several pictures at the same time so that we can do uh, what's called an HDR, high dynamic range uh, photo. I'm gonna keep it on single right here, which is a single photo. You also notice on the right side, we have videos. We'll get you videos in a little bit when we're done with the photos right here. From here, what do we do? We can tap out of it 
And you notice we have 3x, which is highlighted right now. The drone is sitting right here and it's set on 3x because I like that shot and I wanted to talk to you through the drone or talk to you through the camera right here. We can also push it in 1x. That's going to switch the camera and it's going to show you the entire setup. I'm going to bring it back here to 3x. Right underneath that, you see it says MF. MF stands for uh, Samuel Jackson's favorite word. No, it stands for manual focus. And uh, when you tap and hold on it, it brings you this scale. And what I did is I did manual focus on myself right here because, well, I just wanted to uh, kind of be sharp and not the background. Now you could, if you wanted to, tap again outside, tap on MF once and it would go into manual focus. When I do that, you notice that it gives me the ability to tap on the screen to manual focus on certain things. There you go. It finally caught me by uh, clicking on my arm. Now it's manual focusing, right? It's auto focusing on my arm and the, oh, it just went back. See, it went back to the tree in the back. So I'm going to go back, press and hold on AF. It's going to move to manual focus and then I'm going to be able to bring it back in focus. Now this focus right here, you notice I have little red outlines on my watch. It's not because my watch is red on the outside. It's because I'm using what's called focus peaking. It's this little thing. You can tap on the three little dots right up here and then you can go to camera and then you can scroll down a little bit. We'll get back to these other settings and it says peaking level off, low, normal or high. This will highlight around the subject that is in focus on that image. I like to have it on because I like to see what's in focus when I'm filming. So normal is pretty good right here. Also, something else that's really uh, useful is the overexposure warning. I have that turned on. I'll show you in a second. And then the grid lines, we have an X, a grid and then a dot. You probably don't need all of them. I was using this because we were doing testing on the camera and I like to have it for framing. That uh, rule of third uh, framing right here is probably a pretty good one to have, although it's pretty distracting. So I'm going to turn it off. There you go. Now we have a full image right here. Now, overexposure warning. You notice behind me, like the sky right here is all full of zebras. Well, that's the overexposure warning. What it's telling me is that the sky is a little bit overexposed or close to being overexposed. Why? Well, because I have auto exposure set on the camera. What does this mean? On the bottom right corner, you see it says auto. If I tap on that, it moves into pro mode. That's going to allow me to change some of the settings. I left it on auto on purpose. Why? Because look at me, I'm pretty dark in this image coming from the drone. Doesn't look great because the background is exposed correctly. That's what the auto mode is going to do. It's going to try to expose the image as best as it can. It doesn't know that I want it to expose on me. It just knows that it needs to be overall pretty good exposure. So tapping on the pro, you notice there is uh, 1 over 20, 2.8, 110 I'm going to tap on that cluster of different things right here. And when I do, it brings up a menu. That's the way that we can change our settings. Auto, I'm going to click on auto to get rid of it. And I'm going to click on auto in the shutter to get rid of it. Now I'm in full manual mode right here. I have it on ISO 100. I have it as a shutter of 1 over 20. As a general rule, you probably don't want to have your shutter any lower than 1 over 60 maybe on the drone, maybe 1 over 80. Anything on the right side of that is going to give you possibly a blurry photo because the drone is flying and shaking. This is just the speed at which the shutter is going to open and close. So we want to keep that not too, too high because you notice what happens when I make it too high. It makes everything else dark around me. Now, I also have an ND filter. Maybe Don, can you remove the ND filter from this drone for right now? And yeah, twist it to the left. I'll talk about ND filters in a second, but you're going to get pretty quickly. There you go. Look at that. When we remove the filter, you notice what it did the image becomes so much brighter. That ND filter, leave it off, is basically removing uh, light. It's taking light off of the sensor. For photos, we don't want to use ND filters unless you have a very specific reason for it. So I'm going to keep it on ISO 100 for right now. And then I'm going to set my camera here to be so that at the bottom here, do you see that plus one, plus 1.3? I'm going to keep moving to the left here until that becomes more or less close to zero. Why do I say close to zero? Because I want my face to look okay. I want my face to look properly exposed. Now, when I do that, everything else kind of turns very bright. Well, because we have shade coming from that tree on my face and there's no shade back here in the back. So we have to decide whether my face is going to be exposed correctly or the back is going to be exposed correctly. So I'm going to keep it right here. It looks pretty good. I know it's at plus one and uh, I know some of this is going to be in the back. I'm going to remove actually the overexposure warning so you can see the difference. We still have some sky. The sky is still a little bit blue back here. My face is still pretty dark, but uh, decent at this stage. 
and that's how you would expose your image. So I recommend that you go up, you take off, and then you start to play with these settings. If there is a setting that you don't understand, tap on it and then tap on auto, and then the camera is gonna do its best to change that setting, that specific one, in order to get proper exposure. I'm gonna take it off again, right here. And then on the left side of this, we have J plus R, 498, 169, and 5600. We can tap on that cluster as well. It's gonna open a new window. At the top is our white balance. That's the color of the image. That's the, the orange or bluish of the image. You notice if I slide this to the right, it makes the image a bit more yellow. It looks like we were shooting in Mexico. This is a joke in the film world. And then this looks like we are shooting on Game of Thrones in the, uh, in the ice. Uh, <laughs> and it's all blue, it's very cold, right? So we want to keep that number. I like to have it, quite frankly, at 5600. Most of the time, 5600 works really well. You can slightly adjust it in post. I don't recommend that you switch it to auto, because when you do, auto is gonna try to find the best temperature for that specific scene, which means that depending on the colors in the image, it might change the, the white balance throughout the entire flight, and that's gonna fluctuate. Your image is gonna change color. Your, your grass might look green one second, and then the next second, it might look yellow. So keep away from that. Keep it at about, see, when I went to auto, it went to 5300, so I was pretty close. I'm gonna keep it at 5600, that's the standard we use on all of our cameras, and it works really well. And then we have JPEG, RAW, or J plus RAW. JPEG is a compressed version of the image, RAW is an uncompressed, which is gonna take a lot more room, and then J plus R is taking JPEG plus RAW. Then the aspect ratio, 169, 69 ratio, just like you have on your phone, or 4 third, like you have on grandma's TV, that's the four-third sensor right here, four-third format. I recommend you keep it on 16.9. In most cases, that's gonna be uh, the most uh, convenient. Then we have 12 megapixel resolution or 48 megapixel resolution. What it means is that it's using more or less pixels on the drone in itself. Click on this video right here. We did a full review on the image quality, when you should be using 12, when you should be using 48. Um, because we're outside right now, I recommend using 48 at the moment. And only if you fly at night, I would recommend switching to 12 megapixel. And then we have our storage. We're gonna use the card instead of using the internal memory. This has an eight gigabyte uh, memory card inside and um, that you cannot remove, but otherwise we have one in the slot right here. So we're gonna keep it this way. And then you notice at the bottom right, I can click on that setting and then it takes me back to the ISO and the shutter. I'm gonna click out of this. These are your settings. These are your settings for your photo. Go out and have fun. If you're really not sure about any of these, we have photography courses that you can use to help with all of this and understanding the relationship between all of them. Uh, actually, we have a course called Drone Flying 101, uh, which is pretty cheap and it's gonna walk you through all these steps to set up the camera correctly and learn about the airspace in much more detail than I did in this video. Okay, from here, we're gonna to move to the video section, which is right underneath it right here. And when we click on that, you notice that that red, that white button turns red. That means that we're in video mode and then we'll be able to start taking photos. One thing I didn't mention for the photo mode, if you wanted to take that photo, you're just gonna push on that white button. You hear the clicking sound. That means it took a picture. That's it, you took a picture, congratulations. Now let's go back to the video mode right here. When we get into the video mode, you notice we have different modes as well on the left side normal, night, and slow motion. I'm gonna keep it in normal, but guess what? All of the settings that we talked about before, they are exactly the same on the bottom right corner. You notice it says auto, I push on it, it says pro, I tap again on that, on that cluster, I have auto that I can turn off, I have shutter that I can turn off, and then I can do all my adjustments right here on the camera automatically, manually. Now, this is where you would want to use an ND filter, neutral density filter. That's going to allow you to remove the light. So I'm going to keep it in this setting. You notice how much light we have gone on. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit lower. Notice all the light that's coming into the camera right now. And I'm going to have Dawn. You notice how blown everything is? Dawn is going to put the ND filter back onto the camera. And notice all of a sudden what's going to happen as soon as it's clipped on, boom. You notice all the light is gone. I didn't change any of the settings. That light is gone. So now I have to make my adjustments again in order to um, go back to the proper settings. Now, I would use a lower filter. This is way too dark of a filter because we're in the shade. But when we go out in the bright area, that's gonna be the right size. Use ND filters on videos only. Again, if you want more information, we have another video to talk about ND filters uh, in way more depth. 
and then you'll be able to understand exactly what they do because well it's pretty complicated and then another thing is the quality of your video very much like we have jpeg and raw and 69 and four third we have other settings on the video side you have 1080 this is a uh, thousand and eighty pixels on the uh, vertical side of the image or we have 4k which is going to be 4k 4,000 pixels across the top and then we also have the number of frame per second this is how many frames the camera is recording every second 60 frame per second now if you're a newbie and you don't know what all this means yes we have a course for this but i'm going to give you the settings here 4k 60 just keep it at 4k 60 it's going to make your image look really really good and if you wanted to do a vertical format you can do that in this drone right here by doing 1080 916 you notice it's cropping the image you see here only uh, let's see if i can point it I'll need this image right here, all the way down to right down here, and then and then <laughs> all the way around here and coming back on this side. Only this non-shaded area here is gonna get recorded when we do the 16.9. And uh, here, or 9.16, sorry. You can do 2.7K at 916. So um, down, I'm gonna go back to 4K because unless you're recording for social media, I recommend that you just do 4K at 60 frames per second, and then you'll be pretty happy with the footage. Then down here, we have the different color mode. HLG is going to give you uh, a lot more work <laughs> on the computer to edit your footage. Same thing for D-Log M. If you're not familiar with these modes, don't worry about it. Keep it in normal when you get started and then keep it on H265. It's going to give you a better image on a smaller package, smaller file size. And that's it. That's your settings right here. So a good setting right now, since we're recording at 60 frames per second, we want our shutter speed to be 1 over 120. Don't ask me why, that's just the rule. And then we're going to adjust everything else around it. Hopefully we can adjust it so we have ISO 100, shutter 1 over 120, and then you pick the right filter that gives you the right exposure, where instead of having negative 2.3 here, we would have zero. Don, if you take off the filter, I bet you we're gonna get back to about that number right now. So it means, yeah, pretty close, plus 0.17, plus 0.07. It means that our image is slightly overexposed in this case. So that's it, we keep, we're gonna keep it off uh, for right now, but if we were to take off, I would put a filter. I think this is an ND32, I would put an ND16 on here. So let's go ahead and take off, and then we're gonna take a look at the rest of these settings, which is gonna be our automated flight modes, which is gonna allow you to do some really cool shots without knowing how to fly the drone really well. So something else that's really cool with this drone is the ability to track people or track objects or cars or whatever it is. Now we have Don right here that went into the photo and I'm framing him. And what I'm gonna do with my finger is I'm going to drag onto the screen as Don is walking, there you go, it picked him up. And you notice I'm not doing anything and it's following Don as he's walking around the, uh, the line right here. And from here we have the ability, you notice it says spotlight, active track, or point of interest. Spotlight is gonna do just that. The drone is perched on top of a, a virtual object and it's just gonna rotate as Dawn is going and it's just gonna follow him by not moving, by just yawing and rotating. We can do active track and when we do this, what it's gonna do is it's going to ask us if we want to follow Dawn from, I'm gonna click again on that little guy here, from the back, from the front, from the right or from the left. If I click go, what it's gonna do is it's gonna get behind Dawn right here and it's going to follow him. And if I tap again on the little guy and do right, then it's gonna go to Don's right. Now he moved. Now let's see what the drone does. It's gonna wait a little bit. It's gonna get behind him. And then it's gonna go to the right eventually to follow him and there you go, there it does its thing. I'm not touching any of the controls, right? This is all done by the drone because it's going to the right. If I tap again on the little guy and I go front, then it's gonna follow him from the front. The best thing about all this is that it has obstacle avoidance at the same time, which means that if uh, we were getting close to an object, then it would basically stop or go around that object and, uh, and then we would be able to avoid crashing. We've tested this in the past with other, with the Mavic 3 series, and it was absolutely amazing. The, the drone avoidance was just berserk. And then we have the point of interest, so I can click stop. It's gonna stop doing that. And by the way, you can also start recording as it's doing this, or taking photos or whatever you wanna do. And then uh, if we do POI, point of interest, if I tap go, then what it's gonna do is it's just gonna keep rotating around Don as he is moving at the same time. I can go slow or I can go fast. You notice if I tap on that arrow and slide it, 
then now it's moving around Don as he's walking and you notice it's going pretty fast. And that effect is really, really cool right here. Just imagine just circling around someone uh, as they're walking. You don't have to really know how to fly all that well to do this. You just have to be careful with obstacles, other people around that you don't hit someone. Now, if I wanted to climb up as I'm doing this, I can climb as well. And then the drone would start climbing. You notice, there you go. It's climbing as I'm following down. I'm not doing anything else here, but pushing the stick. If I wanted to go further away from him, then I can do that. I can go with my right stick and go back. Now it's making the circle bigger as it's walking and circling around Don. Absolutely amazing technology. Play with these, be very careful, but all you have to do is basically select the person on the screen and then click go and it's gonna start doing this. And when you're done, all you have to do is push stop. And there you go, it's gonna stop and uh, we'll be able to move on to the next subject. All right, for this next part, we have to be up in the air to talk about this. And these are gonna be our master shot, quick shots and hyperlapse. The master shots is pretty simple. DJI decided that some of these shots are really cool. So you're gonna pick a subject, you're gonna circle it, tap on it, and you're gonna push the play button and it's gonna record a whole bunch of different shots in order to uh, highlight that specific uh, area. I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna make it super boring. I'm gonna pick this block of granite, of, uh, of bricks, right here in the center. And you notice what I did is I grabbed my finger. I'm gonna do it again so you can see. I grabbed my finger across that object. You notice it selected the object. It said estimated flight time of one minute. I'm gonna do, uh, yep, that works. And let's see if I can make it smaller than that. You can change some of these settings. You notice the start, the green start button next to it. I'm gonna push, I'm gonna climb a little higher because there's a tree right here. I don't wanna land in the tree, although it has collision avoidance. I'm gonna click start. Three, two, two, one. one. And then now it's going. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna do its own thing. It's gonna take two minutes. It's gonna fly around. I might pause it in the middle and uh, so that we don't have to walk through all this stuff. You notice it tells you what it's doing. It's doing a droney. So keep an eye on the airspace, the drone is flying by itself. Now, if anything happens, you wanna push that pause button right here on the controller. So I would say, put your finger on the pause button. If something happens, push pause, you're gonna take over the drone and then start to fly it. Now it's doing an orbit. You notice it's circling, it says circle far. So it's circling far. Again, make sure nobody's in the airspace, nobody, you're not flying over people, moving vehicles, whatever it is. And it's gonna keep doing its thing. Then there you go, it says pitch up and fly forward. All these are pre-selected. Okay, these are all things that DJI knows makes for a good shot. There you go, it pitches forward. It's gonna reveal beautiful block of bricks. And then from here, it's gonna do a circle close. Let's see how it goes. We have mountains behind us. I'm keeping an eye on that. We're way clear, so that should be good. And then it should be pretty much done. You notice it's actually doing that. It says 50%. It switched between 1x and 3x and 2x. It tells you what, uh, what kind of, uh, Fly of zoom. Fly with caution, aircraft nearby. Okay, we're gonna keep an eye for that. I'm sure it's just because of the airport nearby. We're very, very low right now. We're only 60 feet, so. Uh, I don't think the other aircraft is gonna be an issue. Rocket, it's doing rocket, which is one of the automated mode. Again, I have my finger on the pause button just in case we need it. And then it's going to do camera down, fly forward. Okay, nice. It kept it really tight, really close to the subject. And then now it's doing the rotation. And then it says camera straight and descent. Oh, interesting, it's doing stuff far on the horizon. Camera down and descent. It's almost done, 98%, 99%. There you go, 100%. So it did what, like six or seven different shots, master shot complete, and then it's bringing the aircraft back to the original position where we started, which was right there. And now you notice on the bottom right corner, we have that black window, Oop, it went away. I can tap on the little circle here and then we can replay. It's on the bottom, on the top left, you say two minutes and two seconds, click on that. And it says create master shot. I'm gonna create my master shot. It's gonna take a few seconds and then it's gonna to start to play. There's different templates that you can use. Nature, back in time, original. Let's do nature right here and click play. 
There you go. It plays in the background. It picked different shots. It's got cool music. And it did the whole edit right here without me doing anything. And it, there you go, it does the rotation. It's really cool. It's just really cool to make quick shorts or whatever it is for that specific area. And you can pick different templates. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. That was master shots. Now we're gonna go back to uh, our menu and then we're gonna do the quick shots. And I'm not gonna do every single one of them. I wanna show you the list. So the first one is the drony where it starts low and then it pulls back away from the subject. We have the rocket, which is goes on top of the people and then climbs up. We have circle, which is just basically an orbit rotating around the subject. Same thing for the helix right here, except it kind of does like a, a snail motion. If you've seen the, 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 the snail uh, look, it goes like this and then it climbs up at the same time. And then the boomerang goes away from you and comes back just like a boomerang kind of does like an oval shape. The asteroid is going to finish by having a mini planet at the very end. Try all these, really. They're, 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 uh, they're a personal preference. It depends on your taste, but I'll show you how one of them works because they all work kind of the same. Let's do the drone for example. I'm going to turn the drone away. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but just so you can see right here, I'm going to descend the drone, face it towards us, towards the team, bring the camera up, and here we are. I'm going to select us in this area hopefully there you go it allows us to do this and then it says what distance do you want to do you can pick from the drop, drop down to whatever distance you want to select i'm just going to keep it very small at 120 feet and then all you have to do is push start and then it's going to go Three, to one two, and then it's going to pull back and it's going one. to record that shot and there it is it flies away from us you can see the percentage we're already at 20 percent it goes really quick and then it's going to put that video together at the very end and then you'll be able to watch it when it's done doing its thing it's going to come back by the way all of these are available in 1x and 3x depending on the camera that you want to be using and then the last thing i want to show you is hyperlapse hyperlapse is going to take time for you to figure out how to do them correctly this is not a tutorial on how to do hyperlapse but essentially hyperlapse is going to take a picture every so often as you fly into a path this allows you to do something that our friend billy kyle does really 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 well he goes out he goes into cityscape and he does hyperlapse with the clouds moving around with cars moving around sometimes even with lights moving around and it just looks beautiful you can see some of the examples playing in the background right now and these are just really really cool so go check out billy uh, billy kyle on instagram he posts amazing videos of these hyperlapse that he does and you can do them in a circle you can do them by using a course lock going in a specific direction or you can have pre-generated checkpoints that you use or you can do it free by just hand flying the drone essentially the idea is you fly really slow and take a picture every so many seconds and then it's going to put a video together of all these pictures it takes time it takes patience it takes the right type of landscape to do this go out and practice that's really the only way that you can do all this and then the last thing we have in here is panoramics same thing i want you to go and play with them you've seen panoramas you probably have a cell phone that does this but we have the ability to do either a full 360 uh, sphere we can do 180 degrees which is half a circle we can do a very wide angle using nine different pictures that are going to be stitched together or we can do a vertical one with three different pictures taken vertically that are going to be stitched together to make a very uh, tall uh, photo if you had a very tall building that doesn't fit in one image then you'll probably want to go ahead and do this using that vertical panel and that's it friends that's everything that we have on this drone it's absolutely amazing i want you to go out and practice let us know if you have any questions additional content that you would like to see i want to invite you to go to our free deep dive for this drone you can find it along with about 15 other deep dives for all sorts of drones for free on pilotinstitute.com uh, we offer these drone courses they go over all the different features even in more depth than we did in this video and then you'll be able to basically learn all the details all the different specs and then fly your drone safely and the best is it's available for free so that's it that's all we have we'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.